Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, first of all, thank you for letting me join by means of this video message on the occasion of this side event for which I would also like to thank Norway and Sweden for having brought us together once again on what is perhaps one of the more exciting initiatives and also breakthrough stories of our partnership in the UN system, particularly between the United Nations Development Programme and UNEP, the United Nations Environment Programme. We are about to embark on the next phase of the Poverty Environment Initiative for the years 2013 to 2017. And in many respects, I think many of you who are at this event, but also at the review that took place of PEI last year, we all concluded that not only was this, was this initiative on the right track, but it also addressed many of the objectives which became part of the narrative of the Rio Plus 20 conference. Whether it is the three dimensions of sustainable development, whether it is the integration and mainstreaming of environmental issues in the context of poverty eradication and economic development paths, whether it is the ability of the UN family to work as one, whether it is the ability also of the international system to provide countries with concrete and practical support and tools and capacity building in the context of green economy and the opportunities that this provides for addressing multiple objectives in the sustainable development process. I personally have always been convinced that poverty eradication without a clear understanding of how particularly the poor rely in rural economies but also often still in urban areas on natural resources, on that natural capital which underpins often the economy and the livelihoods of the poor is central to trying to talk about sustainable development and poverty eradication in the 21st century. Indeed we know today that very often that natural system on which poor communities and the rural economy rely are sometimes the last safety net that people have at their disposal. But that cannot be the whole answer to the question of environment, development and economy. Indeed, we must begin to understand, as we have often done over the last few years, that it is in the natural capital, whether it is land, soil, forest, biodiversity, water, wildlife, or indeed the productive potential that is associated with using these resources, that we have one of the most significant opportunities for also building the pathways out of poverty. It is not only about poverty alleviation, it is about poverty reduction, it is about creating opportunities for livelihoods and as we have also learned in our work, very often avoiding the loss of livelihoods because we destroy the very natural resources in the name of development at times that the poor rely on. Trying to achieve this is not only a matter of economic and development planning, it is not only a matter of environmental policy and regulatory frameworks, it is indeed about how national and macroeconomic policies can begin to take account of the value of these resources to the poor and in the broader context also to the development of whole nations and economies. It is here that the focus of the Poverty Environment Initiative and the coming together of UNDP and UNEP I think have yielded real benefits. We see that because the demand for support from PEI has now risen to 50 countries in four regions across the world. Clearly that is testimony to being able to provide something that countries not only want and need but have also been able to utilize. The focus on particularly trying to look at planning, frameworks, budgetary allocations and macroeconomic policies has in a sense created the opportunity for bringing the knowledge we have today about environment, natural resources, ecosystem management, climate change and also issues that often threaten the health of citizens, for instance chemicals, which on the other hand are part of the opportunity of intensifying agricultural production, have to be part of a broader approach to development. I think the Poverty Environment Initiative, and I hope many of you will agree with us, is an example that has allowed us to not only bring different communities and constituencies together, but also to overcome the notion that it is the environment ministers who need to take care of this issue. The contrary argument being that environment ministers are too weak and it is finance and planning and economics ministries that are at the heart of trying to make these transitions happen. It is our perspective from the UNEP side, but I'm sure also from our colleagues in UNDP, that it is not an either or. It is about empowering environment ministries with the evidence that can in turn also assist them in trying to work with economics, planning and finance ministries to make the kinds of budgetary allocations, investments and also policy frameworks that allow environmental resources to be part of the foundation for an overall integrated poverty reduction strategy. Let me end by also saying that I believe this is a wonderful example of how UNDP and UNEP have combined their respective strengths and also networks and capacities across the globe. 
our partnerships at country levels and also in the context of the United Nations Development Assistance Frameworks have demonstrated that this joint delivery mechanism with joint staff, a joint secretariat and joint financing has really delivered on the promises that we made a few years ago when we embarked on this journey. But let me also take this opportunity and thank our partners, in particular our financial supporters and contributors, because without your confidence and also to a certain extent trust in this experiment, we would not have been able to develop this program. And I do have to look at the list for this because there are many of you, and that in itself I think is testimony to the Poverty and Environment Initiative's success in having gained the confidence of more and more countries. In particular, let me mention Belgium, Denmark, Germany, Ireland, Norway, Spain, Sweden, the United Kingdom, the US, and also the European Commission. All of you have, over the past few years, in one form or another, contributed to our ability to try and make something that we often discuss at World Summit, such as Rio Plus 20 in theory, become practice in the multilateral system, and more importantly, in terms of support at national and country level. For that we are very grateful and we hope that you will continue to walk with us as we develop to roll out this Poverty Environment Initiatives to more countries across more regions over the coming four years. Thank you and to our colleagues in UNDP I wish you also a very successful Executive Board meeting which I know is also happening this week. Thank you and goodbye from Nairobi.